Hey, what's up? Granted by Sega. Now there's a misnomer that using USB power has already been done, but it's not the case. Now what has been done in the past is modders have been using 7.3 volt lithium ion batteries typically used for cameras. Now 7.3 volts have been used is because it's been thought that system operation required a voltage between 6 to 7 volts. Now we can prove some of this by applying the standard 5 volt volts that uh, USB uses to the external battery pins on a Nomad. Here we are taking USB power from that cube um, outlet to a 5 volt power supply um, connected to the back battery pins of the Nomad. Um, the power supply voltage is being monitored by the multimeter. Check the low battery light you can tell a lower voltage than normal is being used, which still yields a non-operational system. Now, if 5 volts was used before, you can bet that we would see a ton of YouTube videos documenting how to use USB power for a notepad. Now, what would be the advantages of using USB power 5 volt lithium ion batteries instead of the 7.3 lithium ion batteries that's being used in the majority of the mods. For one, it would be a easier and more accessible way to recharge a USB 5 volt battery instead of a 7.3 volt one because you have these USB um, ports everywhere. It's on pretty much everything from TVs, your LED lamp, your computer obviously, cable TV boxes, etc. And you can get rid of that specialized charger cable and dock for your battery. Another one is cost. USB power banks are super cheap. And size. Lithium polymer USB power banks are super thin. So you could probably fit one internally into the Nomad and power and charge your Nomad much like your smartphone. In short, using 5 volt USB batteries instead of the 7.3 lithium ion batteries that's being used today is much more convenient and readily available. Okay, now we can open up the Nomad and if you don't know how, you can refer back to episode 43 where I do a screen replacement. Now grab some saran wrap so you can protect the screen while you're working on it. Before we go any further, I'd like to say that this mod is only applicable to well, this portion of the mod is only applicable to those nomads with the screen replaced with newer um, LCD screens. Toward the end of the video, I'll show how to apply USB power for a stock nomad. Here, I'm just removing the two connectors that's going to the main board, which is the start and mode button board connector and also the speaker connector. Once off, we can take off the main board and apply the um, saran wrap to protect the uh, LCD screen. I removed the main board because we're going to desolder the tray pot that was used for brightness control on the old um, screen, which is no longer used. Now, I chose this spot because the trim pot was no longer being used, but you can certainly use any other location if you wish. This is where our USB connector is going to be. Here's my custom cable that connects to the, you guessed it, the backlight connector for the old LCD screen. The micro USB connector came in with the connector already soldered to the SOIC PCB. Being dip spaced and made connecting the wires or soldering the wires to the PCB very simple. You can find this connector PCB combo on Amazon, which I'll leave the link to below. I just needed to extend the wires for the old USB fluorescent backlight um, and extend it over to where the new location is for the uh, USB connector. Now just apply some hot glue to mount the USB connector. So basically we're just using the old fluorescent backlight tube connector as the input pins for powering ground. Make sure you're applying power to the power pin and ground to the ground pin 
can easily find out which is which by doing a continuity check between one of the pins to ground. Now all we need to do is reassemble and we're done. So yeah, here's the modded system running the awesome game Strider. Here's an idea to take this further. Remember that micro USB connector? It still has two pins left on it. Could probably use those pins to run mono audio and video out through a single micro USB cable. Whoa, check this out. I modified a USB cable and connected a 9 pin mini DIN on the other end. Disconnect power to pin 2, which is the 5 volts VDC, and ground, which is the um, outer ring. Now, if you check with your multimeter, there's actually continuity between pin 2 and the power pin for the fluorescent backlight connector. I'm pretty sure applying USB power to an unmounted um, Nomad will still work even though again you have the original screen. Like I said before, the backlight, um, the old backlight only used 5 volts and the LCD um, display itself shouldn't have been consuming more than 3.3 volts, certainly not over 5 volts. Here I'm demonstrating applying 5 volts and ground directly to the AV out jack. All I'm using is a 3.3 volt or 5 volt power supply. Here I'm just going to use 5 volts. By the way, you gotta wonder why Sega chose to use 9 volts for its power adapter. Why not use a 5 volt power adapter as the system seems to run off 5 volts fine. Maybe they wanted to get rid of old stock parts. My bet is they didn't want all these power adapters for Genesis, Sega CD, 32X and all these power adapters to get mixed up by the consumer and breaking their system. Now here I want to test the minimum threshold for the um, input voltage. Here I'm using 3.3 volts, which is actually um, New World 3.18, and you can see um, it's not displaying properly. So yeah, as you can see, this is a pretty simple mod. I even hesitate to call it a mod. There's a ton of possibilities um, with using 5 volts for your power. Another one off the top of my head is using the AV out jack as a single cable solution for video, power, and audio. Think SCART or JP21 cables, which usually carry power, video, and audio. Good SCART cables will have the R, G, and B wires uh, separately shielded, so you don't have to worry about noise. Anyway. Pretty much it, man. See you guys later.